Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today I want to show you how to upload custom fonts to Squarespace. Let's be real, Squarespace has a huge selection of awesome free fonts available for you to use on your website and we love them for that. But do they have that gorgeous font you downloaded from Creative Market and used throughout all of your branding and social media graphics? Chances are they don't. So today I'm going to show you exactly how to get that beautiful font onto your Squarespace website. This tutorial involves a little bit of coding, but don't freak. It's basically just copy and paste. It's very, very easy. So let's dive in. Okay, let's dive in. I'm going to show you how to upload a custom font to Squarespace. So like I said, Squarespace comes with a ton of different fonts and you can find those under design fonts in Squarespace 7.1 or you can find all your font settings under design site styles in Squarespace 7.0. So there are a ton to choose from, but that doesn't necessarily mean they are on brand for you. So I totally understand wanting to upload your own custom font. A really common place to buy custom handmade fonts is creativemarket.com. They have so many great fonts if you're looking for fonts and most of them have an additional web license. So that is going to be my first disclaimer about using and uploading a custom font is that you really need to make sure that you're using the correct license. Not all fonts come with the ability to use them on your website. That doesn't mean you can't actually use them, but it means that you're doing so illegally. So you really want to make sure that you paid for the correct license. So if you have downloaded a font for free from somewhere, just do some Googling and try to figure out what license that font has, where you can find a license to purchase for that font to use it on your website. There are some totally free fonts you might have just lucked out, but most of the time you do need to purchase a web specific license. So on Creative Market, when you go into a font and you go to purchase, there's a bunch of licenses on the side. And if you're embedding the font onto your website, which we will be doing today, you need to get a web font license. You can learn more about the licenses by clicking on this what are these button and reading about them but simply you'll need a web license if you're embedding the font directly into your website like we are you can use custom fonts in graphics and upload those to your website using desktop or other licenses but when you're actually embedding the font into the back end of your website so that you can type with it and everything like that that's when you need a web license and if the font you want doesn't op offer a web license, then I recommend just emailing the creator and seeing if they have one for sale elsewhere. So that's step one, getting the right license. Step two, we actually want to obviously download the font and then we need to make sure we have the right file types. So depending on which font you've downloaded, it might have come with a few different file types. This one, for example, comes in a TTF, OTF, and a WAF but this will vary depending on your font. So I'm gonna show you a way to get all of the types that we need out of the one file. So I'm gonna use this font that I've already downloaded. It's called Printed Moments and it is from Creative Market. So it actually came with four file types and these are all the ones I need, but just in case yours didn't come with all of the correct file types, I'll show you now what to do if yours doesn't have all the file types. Okay, so we need an OTF or a TTF a WAF and a WAF2. So you can see I have all of those there, but it's possible that yours only came with an OTF and no TTF or whatever combination you received. We can make sure we get all those files. So to get all the file types we need, I recommend going to fontsquirrel.com slash tools slash web font dash generator. And I will link that below. But basically we can upload our fonts here and it will give us all the file types we need. So let's just say my font just came with an OTF. I would upload that here. And then it asks you again if you have the correct licensing for embedding on your website. So assuming you do, click yes. And then click download your kit. Click on your downloads to open it up. And you'll see here you've got a WAF and a WAF2. And because we already have that OTF, then we have all of the files we need. Remember, it's an OTF or a TTF, a WAF and a WAF2. So I'm just gonna use these ones because they're already in here, but that is how you get the extra files if you need them. Okay, so now we need to upload these to Squarespace. Head over to your Squarespace site, click on design in the sidebar, custom CSS, and then scroll right to the bottom and click manage custom files. 
add images or fonts. Locate your files. You just need to upload the three, so either the OTF, WAF, and WAF2, or the TTF, WAF, and WAF2. So you'll just have to do one at a time. Awesome, so now I have my three fonts in there. And now we're gonna start adding a little bit of code here in the custom CSS area. So I'm going to um, paste all of the codes below this video. And if you're watching this on my website, they are in the blog below. So just scroll down and have a look. And that means you can just copy and paste them. So this is the first code we want. And this is basically just linking the font name with the different fonts we just uploaded. First, you wanna change the font name, and this is just for internal reference only. I'm gonna call this printed moments because that is the name of our beautiful font. And then here it says URL, 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 and it shows you here which URL to put in. So for the first one, we're gonna either use the TTF or the OTF URL. You can find the URL by clicking on the files we just uploaded. So what I recommend doing is leaving a little bit of space because when you click on them, it'll paste it in. Click Manage Custom Files, and we're looking for the TTF or the OTF. So it's going to be this one. And you can see as soon as I click on it, it pastes the URL here. So I'm just going to copy that and put it just where this blue text is in between the brackets. Just like that. Then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the WAF and the WAF2. So manage custom files, make sure you're clicking on the right one. There it is there. Copy that and pop it into your brackets. And one last time, WAF2, copy that and paste it into your brackets. So now you have the font family name, which is in my case, printed moments, and you have the three URLs which are connecting to those custom files. So this is your main font code. That's all you need to do with that. You don't need to edit that anymore. It will just stay like that. The second piece of the code is you need to actually assign the font to a specific heading style. So for example, on your Squarespace website, you have heading one, heading two, heading three. If you're using Squarespace 7.1, you'll have heading four. And we need to replace one of these headings with our font. So this is personal preference, but I'll show you how to do it. And then you can take the code from there and do what you wanna do with it. So again, this is pasted below the video. I'm going to paste in this little piece of code. And this specifically says heading one, and then font family, and we're gonna put our font name in here. So our font is called printed moments, and make sure it exactly lines up with the font name here, because that's where it's pulling it from. It's pulling it from these links into this heading one. And you can see that our heading one on our site changed to our new font, which is awesome. So this works with any headings. You can put in heading two, heading three, heading four, and now basically all of the headings are our new font. If you want to create a paragraph font, you can put P, which is paragraph, and you can see that the body text has now been changed to the custom font. So obviously this looks a bit crazy, but it gives you an idea of how the custom font works. So let's just leave it at heading one for now, and I'm also gonna put in heading six which is something that doesn't actually exist. And this is helpful if you want to add another heading style. So obviously Squarespace has one, two, three, or four. Obviously it doesn't have heading five or six, but you can actually put that in quite easily. If you were already using fonts for heading one, two, and three, and four that you didn't want to change, you could put in a heading five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever number you wanted to use. And you can add that to your page with a code block. So I'll click save and show you on the page. If I wanted to add a heading six, add a code block to your page, put an open bracket heading six, then close it. And then you just need to type between those two. So here is our heading six font. 
And you can see there, it is the custom font we uploaded, which is really cool. So you'd only use this if you didn't want to put your font on your heading one, two, three, or four, because it is a little bit harder because you have to code everything in. Instead of just typing with a regular text block like this, so this is just heading one in our regular text block. So this is definitely easier to use if you can put it on one of the headings. So once you've put in the headings that you want to be your custom font, you might want to update the size or the style, maybe the letter spacing. There's usually quite a lot of things to adjust when you upload custom fonts because they are so custom and they're usually quite different than the Squarespace built-in fonts. So you usually need to adjust them a little bit. This actually looks pretty good, but I will show you how I would adjust the H1, H2, H3, and H4. So you can actually just use the built-in settings to adjust these. If you come to fonts, headings, and if you scroll down, you'll see you have your one, two, three, and four in here. So you can see if I adjust the heading one size, it's gonna adjust heading one just like normal. And all of the settings will be the same as well. But just remember that the heading settings are universal. So if I adjust the letter spacing for heading one, it's gonna adjust the letter spacing for all of the headings. So if you did wanna do some adjustments on this specific font and not adjust the other headings, or if you wanted to do some adjustments on a font that doesn't actually exist in the fonts panel, you need to do that with some code. So I'll show you how to do that. Go back to your design and then click on custom CSS. Scroll down to where we've put the fonts and I'll give you a few extra things you can use. And I'm gonna paste these below the video as well so you can play around with them. Let's say we wanted to change the size of heading six because it's a little bit small at the moment. That's just working from the base size in Squarespace. So the more headings you have, the smaller and smaller they get as you go. So let's make heading six a little bit bigger. And I wanna leave heading one the size that I set it in the fonts panel. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna split these up. So you can just create two of these. So just make heading one, font family, printed moments and heading six font family printed moments. So you actually have two different codes now. They're not combined into one code, which means we can update them separately. So let's create this a little bit bigger. So you wanna type font dash size, and then put in whatever size you want it to be. So you can use pixels, points, percentages. Um, it doesn't really matter, just play around. So I've changed mine to 20 pixels and that's pretty good. You have full range of whatever you want to do here, though. You could change it to 200, which is going to be gigantic. And let's say we want to change the letter spacing of heading six. Okay, so now there's this nice spacing. Well, I don't think it's very nice, but you know, it's just an example. <laughs> there's some nice spacing between the letters. And let's say we want to change the color. So we can change the color to a light pink color by using color and a hex code. So this is how you can code in font changes individually for each font. So we could do all that same stuff to heading one if we wanted to. I do think it's better to program the size of heading one in the actual Squarespace editor, but when it comes to letter spacing and all of that stuff, because in the Squarespace editor, all that stuff is combined into one, then you might wanna edit some of that in the code. The last thing I want to know is that if you are using your text coded like this, this heading six one, and you want to change the alignment, there's two ways to do it. So if you want your heading six to always be center aligned, you can put it in here. So you do text dash align center, which is going to bring it into the center. But if you don't want it aligned in every single place you put it, you can remove it from there. and actually add it into the block itself. So all you need to do is add little center tags. So an opening tag at the beginning and a closing tag at the end is going to center just this piece of text. And then if I put some more below it, you'll see that it'll be left aligned. Cool, so that is how you add a custom font. I hope that was easy and helpful for you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.